Today we're going to change a lot like the topic and it's going to be like how to track and analyze your funnel or your custom funnels in the cookies this world, right? This uh, famous key work basically for uh, warming up um, who is this for uh, who is this workshop for basically it's for uh, agencies entrepreneurs at the end everybody who spends as um, his bit has he mentioned uh, hours and hours in Excel in Google Sheets tracking all the numbers putting the, the information from the right from one place in the other one the another question is everybody knows what is the cookies this world you know it it's basically uh, the new paradigm that we are going to in the in the digital world without third party cookies not first party cookies but third party cookies and I'm going to use this cookies as well like concept to talk about different other things probably you already know it why it's so important to track to analyze your funnel basically um, most of you guys spend a lot of money on ads manager beauty ads Google ads so basically if we cannot not track anything we cannot analyze if we cannot analyze we cannot optimize we are spending some money our money or the customer money up oh. And then uh, we are going to speak a little bit what should we really track. Again, it really depends on you, on your customers, on your business, but I'm going to just give you some examples about this. First of all, um, who I am, um, this is me, well, it's just there with these crazy and lovely people, which is the Walt Disney team. I'm like you guys, I'm an entrepreneur. I was studying mechanical engineering and also I found my, I found my passion in the online uh, and marketing world. I was consulting over 300 businesses around the world, always around, um, around sales funnels, uh, digital marketing strategies, and for sure I'm uh, focusing on growth at World Audience with Wildmail, as he mentioned, is basically reseller of Active Campaign, and Wildmetrics, which is our own, um, it's like an app, like an add-on for Active Campaign with awesome analytics. The good thing is I scaled last year from uh, 260K um, AR into 509k um, AR using the same system I'm going to share with you um, today and it was just me so now it's Jason also it's Alvaro it's Andrea but last year it was just me and for sure also I'm creator of the podcast Metricas al Desnudo it's in Spanish so if someone wants to uh, learn a little bit of Spanish you are more than welcome you can find me on YouTube Spotify so everywhere and let's get started with what is happening right now in the world of tracking or the tracking world. The cookies as well. I, as I mentioned, as probably you know, uh, Google Chrome is going to start blocking third party cookies really soon. Uh, also, they launched the new Google Analytics 4, GA4, uh, especially for this. Also, as we already mentioned during the whole day, iOS 14, iOS 15. It's going to start blocking the Facebook pixel and even the tracking emails, the open rate of your emails. Browsers like, for example, Brave, Opera, all these kind of browsers are already blocking pixels and, and tracking scripts, so scripts that we use to track that information. And another like, big, big problem we have is that different tools give us different data. Um, for example, it was just my case. I was checking Facebook, how many leads I get from Facebook, and then I went to Active Campaign, for example, could be HubSpot, could be whatever uh, software that you're using, and maybe in Facebook it's 30, and maybe in Active Campaign it's just 15. Who is right? Who is wrong? You know, um, you can really trust on those numbers. We will see now. Also, uh, analyzing everything with Excel sheets is time consuming. Who have ever analyzed or tracked their funnels with Excel sheets, Google Sheet? is spending a lot, a lot of time of this, so it's Again, time consuming, impractical, and for sure, exporting, importing CSV from different platforms, again, is something that is not like practical again, and we cannot correlate like these numbers automatically. And then what if you will stop exporting and importing all this data from Excel, Google Sheets, even Google Data Studio, um, if you will have a single readable source that combines and connect all the data from the different platforms that you use on your business and, and check all in one place. Again, just synchronizing all the data just by, a, by API um, with just two clicks. So no developers, no crazy things. It's just two clicks, connect like with Sapier, and that's it. And also, if you create a system um, that allows you to don't depend on pixel or cookies technology. Okay. 
So that's exactly what we're going to see today, how to create this system uh, to track your funnel, again, or your um, sales workflow, let's see. That system is based on tax. So at least I'm going to try to focus this or, or base it on my experience, which is just with ActiveCampaign. But again, I know with Clavijo, um, HubSpot, uh, MailerLite, there are a lot of uh, the softwares you can always stack, and that's really important. The idea is always stack everything on your funnel, regardless if it's Tofu, top of the funnel, Bofu, middle of the funnel, or Bofu, all right? And we're going to see it. Uh, I just used these five examples, but you can have more if you need it. For example, the action, the tag action, like for example, action, lead magnet, download. It's basically to show you what action is the lead taken on your funnel. We will see some examples also um, in a minute. Events, some event that happen after registering, could be a trial, could be a call schedule, could be a webinar, could be, I don't know, submit a form. Then the third one, which is the status. It tells you if something specific has happened or the status of the lead, if it's a hot lead, if, it, if that lead already um, accomplished in a specific sequence or a next specific goal. And again, purchase, pretty simple. It's just purchase, product A, product B, cancellation, whatever, and segment, right? That's really important. And I'm going to also explain how to create this tax system, but also I'm going to give you some tips and how, some hacks on your, let's say, email marketing or funnel strategy that you can also implement. And segments is one of them. If you segment your list to service, you can always classify them by segments and put it like an, a specific tag for each, uh, for each segment, all right? And what do you need to track? Well, again, it's just an example, so it really depends. I really know it. But again, for Tofu, normally it's traffic sources, YouTube, Facebook, channel, campaign, ad set. Lead acquisition, number of leads, number of leads. Um, if you have different lead magnets, how, what's the, the most famous lead magnets, and for sure, segmentation. In the middle of the funnel, we also use to check conversion events. Okay, so basically webinar registrations again, sales calls, qualifications forms, trials, again, and so on. Lead behavior, really important, click rate, engagement, there is different ways that you can uh, track your engagement or even the custom journey, the whole custom journey. And then the buffo, just purchase. Let's see, purchase, it's not just purchase product A, you can also check downsells, upsells, cancellations, even a partnership if you have like an affiliate program after this. And then let's see top of the funnel right now. Traffic sources. I know most of you guys are spending a lot of money on Facebook and Basically, uh, again, as I said, you check the ROAS or the much of money you get from a campaign directly from Facebook. The question is, Facebook really knows how much money do you have? It's already connected with your bank account to know it. That's the key of the thing. So we are going to try, try to get the accurate information by using tags. And for example, this is just an uh, example. You can use a script. Again, if you, if you use a script, you will need to find a solution really soon because there is the cookie-less world. But for example, with Elementor, this example is just with Elementor. It's a famous WordPress plugin that you directly can connect your form, connect uh, the UTMs directly from this URL in hidden, hidden forms, hidden uh, fields, sorry. And these hidden fields goes directly into a custom field inside, for example, Active Campaign or Wildmail. And then this custom field, um, apply a tag by following one automation, right? So from the UTM, we have a tag with, for example, source Facebook, source Google Ads, source YouTube, campaign number one, two, three, um, ad set, whatever. Whatever you want to, you can put in the UTM, you can also give a tag for a specific things, right? That's one thing. Um, lead acquisition, again, an example, you are running different lead magnets, maybe two lead magnets. Probably you want to know what's the most famous lead magnet, um, but it's getting more like downloads. Again, why? Because probably people that um, download the lead magnet A, they have a average seed cycle or, um, I don't know, lifetime value different than lead magnet B. You, this is something you also um, want to track, and you can track it if you have a tag for every single action on your funnel. Action double opt-in completed. I don't know if you are also following the double opt-in completed, but also you can track how many people um, get out from, from the funnel on this specific step. Or status leads. You can create just a status lead to check 
how many leads you get. And then you can rely on this tag instead of the leads that Facebook is showing you. Again, you have the button, and based on this button, for example, it's directly, um, it's a, like in a pop-up, um, an active campaign form appears, and then I give them this tag. This tag is 5Tool LM Lead Magnet. So I used to use the, the names because I think we have 13 or 14 lead magnets, so it was easy for me, and then directly goes inside the tag session of the content profile. And then segmentation, as I said, we also use this like kind of a quiz where we ask like your problem, your goal, your business type, and we build, we connect this directly, and depending on which uh, answer you click, you will get different tags. Service business, SaaS business, digital business, e-commerce. And then again, everything is struck inside Active Campaign. Probably you can use everything, you can use just 50% of the things, but if you have no tags, there is no way to track it. Okay, middle of the funnel, lead behavior. Um, how we can track the lead behavior? What about the open rates and click-through rates? We have to track it? I think so. But again, open rates, be careful. iOS 15 also is blocking the open rates. So probably a lot of your open rates, there are like false positives. So we cannot, again, trust really on open rates. We have to, click, we have to um, focus or trust on click-through on click rate again. And uh, I'm going to give you some tip about this, which is the frequency selector. Again, depending on, on your business, but um, if you have a, like a welcome sequence of emails, right? And then you're trying to explain kind of a story, like Netflix TV show, uh, but instead of seven episodes, seven emails. Each email is one episode. Just imagine kind of a strategy for your email marketing. If you use Frequency Selector, which is this at the end of the email, you are giving the opportunity to the, to the lead to choose when they are going to get the, the next email if they are gonna mm, give it right now, or maybe wait two days, or even five days, whatever. You are um, customizing the experience of the people through your funnel, and the most important thing, if there is a hot lead, you cannot, you have not um, to put them in a, like in a wait block for 15 days. So we have an example that someone get seven emails in one hour, and then after one hour, they schedule a call with us. That's why, because we use Frequency Selector. There is the option, if they didn't click, they will get the email in two days. And if they click on the, on the option B, they will get the email in two days. The thing is, we can track if people is using this. We can track the lead behavior. Another cool thing could be status hot lead. If you use lead scoring, kind of a gamification um, strategy on your funnel, you can track if someone opened the email, five points. If someone clicked there, 10 points. If someone visited my sales page, 30 points. And then when they have like 200 points, for me it's a hot lead. For sure, this hot lead can trigger an all automation that sends you like a VIP offer, something like this. You can also track all this activity. And for sure, um, completing sequences, funnels, welcome sequence, conversion sequence. Why? Because probably, I don't know, you have like, three stages. Like again, um, opt-in, welcome sequence, and conversion sequence. You want to track when the people it's purchasing more, if it's after the conversion sequence, or maybe not, maybe just on the welcome sequence, or they didn't jump directly until, until into this sequence, or maybe they go to all the sequence, they didn't purchase, and then after three months, once they have the status funnel completed tag, that means they went through the whole funnel, then they decide to, to purchase. You can also determine, um, define, define your uh, average sales cycle. Conversion event, again, that was a question? No. Perfect. Conversion event, tax, again, could be a trial, could be a call schedule, could be a webinar, could be a form submitted. Um, whatever, it could be like a um, car abandonment, for example, for e-commerce. You can also track all this information directly from Calendly, from every webinar, webinar jam, type form, whatever. If you are using, for example, if you have like an active integration, you can do it directly. If not, always with Zapier, you can super easy, you can normally 90% of the times, you can apply attack. Or status uh, follow-up completed. Again, if you are running a follow-up, you can check if that people receive this message, they click on that, on that email, and after this, they decide to purchase or to finally the, um, to get the, your service, for example, or product or whatever. Bottom of the funnel, again, it's just applying purchase tax for every single action, every single product, you can see if people that purchase product A finally 
purchase product C, but people that purchase product C, product B, just keeps with the product B. Again, there is a lot of inform information there. And even status council or status affiliate. You can see how many people get this product. They have also the tax status affiliate, and you can see. That's all about, um, about tax and how to apply it. Again, it really depends on each platform that you're using, but it's just kind of an example. How to analyze your funnel. What is missing? Still something is missing. As I said, we need more data. We need all the information around ads. There is no way to get like the views, the reach, the click-through rate of the ads. So this information, we have to um, get it from the advertised platform. For example, Ads Manager. And revenue information, revenue generated, and ROAS. Probably not from Facebook, probably from your bank, from PayPal, Stripe, Hotmart, whatever you are using. And for sure, a main dashboard. That's one of the most important things. Right now, you have the, the, the system to track every single action of your funnel, based on tax, not depending on pixels or cookies technology. But always, we need a main dashboard uh, to see everything in one place. And then we have two options. Again, I just show you. Different ones, again, Excel, Google Sheet, it's working. Data Studio is also working. Wild Metrics, definitely. There's a lot of other that you can use it. This is just three examples. And option one, it's a traditional way, right? Traditional way, it just put in information from Excel, and then I check on Facebook. And on Facebook, I check PPC ad spend, uh, in lead gen, in retargeting, unique clicks, click through rate, views, um, reach. All this information, always the best place to get it. Is directly from the ads from the ads platform, but again, lead signups. I'm gonna check this information directly by using my tag because it's the right, it's the right one. Facebook is getting this number by pixel. Active Campaign or HubSpot they have just one email, <laughs> so if there is no email, there is no lead. So that's that's important thing. In the middle of the funnel, again, I'm gonna check the open rate and the click rate directly from my ESP uh, software. Engagement events, engagement rate, I can easily calculate, based it on frequency selectors, based in hot leads, based it on whatever you wanna track on your funnel. And Bofu, again, you can also check the open rate or the click through rate if you have a conversion sequence, but for example, page visitors, directly Google Analytics. If you have like sales, um, sales page, you will need to check this on Google Analytics. But pay accounts or buy tag, or directly on Stripe, for example, right? So the, the thing is always get, try to get the information from the most like um, close platform to this KPI. Advantages that we have if we use the traditional way by using this kind of system, we are not affected by iOS 14 or iOS 15. We are not based on pixel, or cookies, uh, even the open rate. Maybe we are, t we are getting the open rate, but also we are getting the engagement, which is the most important thing, more than open. We don't care about pixels or cookies again, and reliable and accurate data acquisition source, right? So we really know how many leads comes from Facebook, how many leads comes from organic, how many leads comes from YouTube. The advantage, definitely, you must add the reminder data manually. I uh, spend like maybe one hour every week, every Monday, checking the performance of the last week, putting all this information here, and then after this, one hour less, checking all the numbers, trying to, um, correlate everything, because at the end it's numbers. You have to interpret these numbers and define which action are you taking about based on this. Option two, new way, again, I show with web metrics, but you can do it with Google Data Studio, with others. You get all the advantages that we get on the traditional way, but also we save maintenance time, because that means we connect in two clicks, directly Facebook, directly Stripe, directly Active Campaign, and we have all this information already here. We have not to put in the data from one place to the other. And definitely some, um, it really depends on the platform that you are using, but some of them, it's not just showing the data like in an amazing way with an amazing dashboards and so on. Also, they are correlating this data super easy and making like, I don't know, how much revenue are you getting per email, how much revenue are you getting per automation, if someone get this tag and this tag, then they purchase what's the ROAS for people who get Facebook and Lead Magnet A. So you can analyze whatever you want because you track at everything. That's a cool thing. Okay. I have a gift for you guys. Um, it's basically our developer. It's already working on script UTM. Again, this is more for now, maybe not for one year. But a script, if you're not using Elementor, I also use Convertbox. 
but if you're not using all, uh, all one of these platforms that allows you to put the UTMs directly in hiding fields and pull this information in tags, you can always use a script UDM. So it's for free. Just reach out to us. Uh, I'm going to share with, um, with you guys the, the email right now in the next uh, slide. And we will, um, we will give you this script UTM. Also, Google Sheet templates. We have templates for digital, SaaS, or service business. Again, if you want to use Wallmetrics, more than welcome. Super happy. But also, you can use Google Sheet templates. And one-on-one -on -one consulting call with me or even with Jason directly. Again, we are going to run Q&As. But tracking and, and all these kind of things is really like custom. So I know I need probably I need a lot of context of your business, uh, your workflow, and everything. So I'm, we are just offering like one-on-one -on -one consulting call for free with us to help you with all these things. And now I think it's the time of the Q&A. I was like a little bit fast, but Kilian like get some time from me. So just to, to make sure that we are in time with the rest of the activities. And this is basically the, the email, support at or benji at as you wish. Okay?